Right there. Good morning, Hello, everybody. Guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, so it seems the stream is working. I see I've got a latency of 10 seconds. So, uh, Mac, just on this whole story of the internet being slow, uh, 
the only thing I can imagine is that um, YouTube has a local ingress server because obviously the local speeds work and then they obviously have their own way of finding you know the rest of society so that's the only thing I can think of why it might be working or not working uh, on YouTube but the rest of the internet suck guys and if you are not aware uh, we get our internet in South Africa via a undersea cable and three breakages has a good one on top of another one close to England apparently one at Gabon and then one in the Congo so the ship has been sent and hopefully it will reach the breakages today or between today and tomorrow and then hopefully they can start working on it so uh, probably more than one ship anyway that's gone out but they're still trying to work on transferring stuff to the east liners well east africa liners yeah 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 so the guys are trying their best in the interim um Streamlabs OBS has done another update and now it is telling me that I'm no longer allowed to chat in Streamlabs OBS while on YouTube. It has now forced me to open up a Google Chrome page. How's that for silliness? But apart from that, apart from that, we, we're okay. We, we're going to ignore all this. Um, I'll answer you uh, via voice anyway, but for now I'm just going to pull everybody into the live on air. Uh, room quickly all right so now we are all on push to talk supposed to be um, I cannot tell you how many guys are looking for me and how many messages I'm ignoring right now just to uh, get going uh, so guys if uh, any of you on stream have left me a message I'll get to you don't worry about it there's just too much to handle at once um, and for the rest we're going to just concentrate on the flight so I've done a couple of things after my lengthy discussion with Twixter yesterday I spoke at length with him about the weights and the new way of calculating it um, and all these things um, and now David is looking for me hold one second guys you're doing a fantastic job Nico thank you Alright, so, just need to get my bearings here, alright, I cannot tell you, and I'm going to say it as it is now, so please forgive me, I cannot tell you how disappointed I am with some of the Zebo users, the bitching and the moaning and the complaining is just, it's just too much, so, I'm going to try and break it down for you guys as easy as possible, um, because it seems like it's not only the cat and the donkey, it's now the elephant that's being dragged from behind the hill when it's really not necessary. Um, I, you guys know I'm not English, so I don't know all the uh, you know nice ways of saying it, so I'm just saying it as it comes to mind. There's only a few little small things that has changed, but it seems to have blown the minds of the users to kingdom come. It's like, it's just too much man too much too much um, so here's the lowdown here's the here's the very basic in essence there are two things that has ever been and will ever be of significance when you are loading the zebra it's the payload the sum total of the payload and the sum total of the field the fact that we now have page 2 and page 3 is actually irrelevant. How's that for a quick answer? It's, it's irrelevant. It's a nice to have. It's, it's a, you know, something for advanced users to play with and something for guys who don't know what they're doing to learn. But the moment you have a total payload, you have a total payload. And the distribution of weights, anything here at the top, is irrelevant because the total weight is going to determine how this aircraft handles whether it's a bunch of kids 
whether it's a bunch of gargo or a lot of females or a lot of males or a mixture in between that's irrelevant the only thing that really matters as always is just the sum total payload i understand that nico that that's excellent explanation I've, mm. i think i've figured that out in the last minute but can i ask for the people who may just mm. are curious um on their on their flight plan they do have x number of passengers such, such and such like that um mm. i guess this is irrelevant but once you put the payload in it i found by playing around with the numbers it doesn't really match what the passengers have and the cargo i'm not sure how you can tweak this or customize this or is well, it just it's just a nice thing to have as you say christian christian if you look at page three it tells you that's yep. the weight of the passengers okay 88.5 88.5 88.5 this is the industry standard all right the industry does not care whether it's a male a female or a kid it doesn't care all right what is now allowed here is you can actually tweak it and by tweaking these values on the right hand side it's going to influence the distribution on this side all right but it's not going to change the final payload value. The final payload value is the sum total of all of this plus the cargo. Now, if you if you set up your PFPX or your SIM brief, and I'm still working on that, I will release it when I'm happy and done after I've spoken to Twixter and he's given me his blessing. Um, so so let's let's just take it, break it down, make it easy. If your OFP gives you an amount of passengers, you can obviously put the passengers. But then it's going to be on you to make sure that you also balance those kilograms over there or the pounds, if you're using pounds, for them to make the Zebo actually use the correct values. So a certain amount of values have been given to you by the team and you are now responsible for the rest so if the OFB doesn't matter what flight planning tool you use tells you that you need to have 120 passengers and that, those passengers will have a weight of three tons the only way you're going to make it balance is to use that page three and then obviously you're going to put in your values and then you're going to have to see does the total come to three tons you understand so if you if you want to take a shortcut, it still works exactly as it used to do yesterday and the day before. All you do is you put in the sum total amount there. All right, you can put it as 16,000 or you can put it as 16.0. Same thing, it's going to change it. So the Zebo will automatically do the distribution for you based upon the values that you put here. Once it's reached its limits here, it's obviously going to click the wrong place. Okay, so it's it going doesn't to add reflect. the cargo. Yeah. So it does. So the payload is is absolutely correctly modeled, which is fantastic. Yes. Uh, but yes. it doesn't um, doesn't actually. Well, some people might say, oh I, "Oh, I have 128 passengers. Uh, I only see 50 passengers. What's happening?" So it doesn't reflect that. It's more more as you say for the payload, as you said, mm. as you said. Well, the payload sum total is what it's about. The distribution you can change. You can now turn around and go and change um, the cargo values, right? I would suggest start there by going zero on your cargo, right? So now you've got zero on the cargo. You know that, let's, let's just work it out here, 88.5 kilograms per person. And let's say we've got 120 people. It means that you need to have 10,620 in your payload. That is what it's supposed to be. All right. So if you go put 10,620 in there, all right, it's going to put cargo and it's going to put weights. Now, if we go and put that back to zero, I'm going to put that back to zero, it now shows us a deficiency. So now we can start adding passengers and we can start trying to get to 10,600 so let's do that one 36 over there now we've gone over the limit so now we need to start fiddling 
All right. So, so we're looking at the sum total. Now we are 10,620 minus 10,279. So you might want to add, I don't know, 10 females in there. Now we've killed it. All right. So, but the fact of the matter is that so you this lost is your cargo. Then. Yeah, I yeah, I know. I I purposefully don't want cargo because you're complaining about the packs. So I'm toying with the packs to give you the packs, right? So so now we can start fiddling. Sorry, I need to take a bit more out there. So Ten thousand one hundred. Now we're five hundred short, so we need like five guys. Twenty-five. Okay, we're going to probably need two guys there. Ah, sorry, I had to add. And you can guys. add kids, kids as well. Yeah, kids and, and, um, and females, males. Uh, uh, we'll look at that just now. Six twenty. So I've just got. So at the moment, they're all males. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm trying to make it easy. You're trying to, to split these now to make it too, too difficult. We'll get there. Just sorry. Now. All right. So we need one more, which is then seven. All right. So we know that we're supposed to be at 10,620. That's the closest we're going to get if we're going to use all males. All right. Um, yes, Dimitri, it will affect the CG. It will definitely affect the CG. And this is why when you're fiddling at the top here, you really should know what you're doing. And why I'm suggesting for guys that don't know what they're doing and still learning, just enter the full amount. All right? Your OFP gives you a full amount. I mean, mm. we've seen it a thousand times already. Um, if you look at your OFP, you'll see it come up there. It tells you my takeoff weight is supposed to be 66.3. It tells me my payload is 17.5. All right. So regardless of what the distribution is here, if I go and put 17,500 in there, the Zebo is going to automatically distribute them because it doesn't care what the distribution is. It cares what the total is. You understand? So if we if we now go and we make this zero again and we make that one zero again, you'll see we now we're short. So um, I tried to put in earlier and then it it changed. So let's go and put fourteen for the females. All right. You see, if you enter there, I think I think this is something that is going to have to be fixed. Let's just put fourteen kids in there. You see, if you start adding these things manually i think zebo will have to fix this and zebo i apologize Nico, if, I understand it if you click um um uh, the button oh there you go there it says have... thank you thank you thank you thank you so much so if we say uh mf and we go and make that 14 all right thank you thank you for teaching me that now now we know mf will make kids if we go um how do we how do we get the other one M? Well, you go M. For, oh, with uh, the value. The okay. For M, okay. Value right. F and then MF14. Well, there you go. All right. So if you don't put anything, it puts it in mail. If you put the M and the F, then it goes to the next step. Okay. So this is just something that we're going to have to get used to. And then we can go and add 14 there, I think. All right, well, 14, we'll put the first one. Um, then we say, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. 14M, 5F, 3. There you go. All right, so that's the format. There we've all learned something together now. 14M. Yeah, Nico, you're very fast. Sorry, I'm trying to struggle to to learn to understand. Okay. As a, a this is all new to us, to me. Mm. Um, do we, as you suggested, do we enter the payload and then let Zebra control yeah. everything in terms That's what of I would the, the passenger? That's or what I would suggest. Or as per the payload, sorry, as per your flight plan, you have 160 passengers plus the payload plus the cargo. Mm. What is the best way to do this? You Just know, that's add what I'm your struggling. payload. Add the payload and let the Zebo do the rest. Because if you Even want to... The... 
if you want to Sorry, split guy. hairs, if you want to split hairs, then you're on your own. This is my advice to you. Then uh, I'm not going to help you. Tim's not going to oh, help no. you. Zebo's not going to help you. You're on your own. Okay. If you want to split hairs, you do that. It's it's on you. If you want the easy no. way, do the payload. It's not about splitting hairs. It's it's about understanding what the best way that is recommended. So for me, I'm all new to this. So sure. this is what I'm trying to understand. Right. Can so I just butt in a bit? we're all new. Yeah. Go. go yeah. McDrain. It just came out a few days ago. <laughs> go, McDrain. Christian, if you put in the payload total say that mm. you get in sim brief and just yep. put the tailo total in and let SIBO automatically fill packs and cargo it may not agree with the number of passengers that you have in sim brief but the payload total will be the same and because it's automatic it loads it in a neutral C of G way. If you start playing with all the figures in the cargo holds and the zones, then you upset the balance of the C of G. And this right. is why I say you either know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing. There's no middle ground, all right? If you go and play with it and you don't know what you're doing, you are going to upset the CG. But then, I mean, that's part of learning. It's part of life. If you can figure it out eventually, if you can learn how it works, then kudos to you. Okay. But at this point in time, uh, people are going ape because they are giving value. Or, or how can I put it? They are making these things more important than they are. The only thing of importance is your sum total. It's the only thing that is important. The distribution of passengers and these things. If you if you do that, you know, then I've said it's it's not relevant. What's relevant so is that. Don't touch zones, don't touch cargo, just enter the payload and the fuel. That's and, it. Yeah, and let the Zebo do the rest until you know what you're doing, until you know how to load an aircraft. Because remember one thing, remember one thing. Tim and Zebo, Dexter and Zebo, are making this aircraft to comply with the Boeing handbook. All right. This model aircraft is based upon a very specific model. It is not based upon the marketing material supplied by Boeing. It is not based on Wikipedia material. It is not based, uh, based on anything except for the actual OEW that came with this model, which they are basing their calculations on. Now, yesterday when we had our discussion, he made it very clear that this aircraft is being modeled on a very advanced model that they have. All right. It's not a flight simulator toy like some other 738s that are floating in the internet. Okay. This thing is being tweaked on a daily basis to come closer and closer and closer to actually, when you take the Boeing handbook, and you reference, it will comply with that handbook. That handbook and the OEW, the load sheet, is unique to this aircraft. There is not a single other aircraft on earth that has the same load sheet, has the same configuration, or anything else. All right? Um, let me give you another breakdown. If you use 88.5 kilograms per user, or, or, or per crew member, let me be specific, per crew member, Legally, this aircraft requires six crew, two pilots and four flight attendants. That's the legal requirement for the Zebo mod. All right. Having 160 seats is a limit that is in the real aircraft. It is not something that is taken from the sky. It's not something that was just decided. It is the limit of the real aircraft. The load sheet itself then tells you the following. That a hundred, that sorry, a thousand and fifty six kilograms has been added to the marketing weight that you will find in a Boeing brochure or on Wikipedia or any other site. One thousand and fifty six kilograms has been added 
for the galley, for the portable water, for the retractable steps, and there's a whole list that Tim gave me yesterday of things that are added that are part of the actual true to life honest to god worksheet that comes or load sheet that came with this model that is flying around on this nice earth of us that is used to model the zebo on all right um aviation chris thank you very much um sorry i'm talking a lot but thank you very much so you've got 531 kilograms that's been added for crew You've got a 1056 kilogram that's been added to this model and that gives you a difference of 1586 kilograms from this model compared to the previous Zebo model because it never um, complied with the actual load sheet. It was just, you know, the marketing material that was used to, to determine these things. Now, there the are two ways. We've discussed them both now. You can do it the easy way or you can learn the hard way. If you know what you're doing, go fiddle with these numbers. If you want to learn how to use them properly, go fiddle with these numbers. At the end of the day, the only thing that counts is this total payload. It needs to be correct. If that complies and is equal to your OFP, the distribution is actually absolutely irrelevant. All right. Unless you want to comply with your OFP and go and fit in 160 passengers and then try and calculate the actual load and do the distribution yourself, you're just wasting time. And then that's, that is where we're at right now. Enter the total payload and get it over with. Because this, all of this, the, the whole PAX loading thing also rests upon these values. All right. That's your industry standard 88.5. But these are the custom values, and you can change these custom values. Now, I'm not going to sit and calculate this for you, because your airline has got its own idea, my airline's got its own idea, the next guy's airline's got its own idea. That is not what it's about. This will allow guys who want to simulate to the next level to go to the next level, but then you've got to know what you do. As easy as that. And that's about the end of that story. Sorry, we're dragging you yep. out way too Just far. Just as a quick intervention, if you're talking about passenger weights, some airlines even have different weights for during the winter and yes. the summer yeah. because of additional clothing. Yes. So my thoughts are, like Nico, just go with the payload total for the time being until you want to look and find out more information exactly but this is like i said and i sorry i don't want to sound nasty when i say that this is going to be on you this is something you're going to have to make peace with in your own mind this is not something the zebo team is going to help you with you're going to have to make peace with this in your own mind if you have a va or you fly with a va with va financials and uh, stuff like this matter because they actually pay you virtual money for things like this uh, you're going to have to find another Nico that's going to have to work it out or you're going to have to be the other Nico. And you're going to have to work out all these things to match with VA financials and, you know, all these kind of programs that are out there. For us, it doesn't matter. We don't care. I think as a suggestion, if anybody's a member of a VA and they want to have different payload passenger weights, they want their VA to do the homework and yeah. give their them to give you the answer of weights, not passing the numbers, etc. Yeah. So, so if we look at this normal page that everybody knows, that everybody's become used to over years already, there you have it. It's the same summary. It's the same fuel for, for the payload and the fuel. Your zero fuel weight, 60.5. Nothing's changed. Um, your takeoff weight, uh, come on, man, is 66.3. We are standing at 66.5 because that includes taxi fuel. It's easy as that. It's always been that way. The moment you start flying around, your landing CG and all these things will be calculated for you. You cannot change this anymore. It's not in your power to change this because the model requires these two little values. That's what it requires to give you the rest. So, 
I've been watching guys bitch and moan and complain and go ape because they are trying to give relevance and value to things they shouldn't. As easy as that. And I'm not nasty when I say that, Christian, and this is not an attack on your way of thinking at all. Um, I need you to just understand it's not as difficult as you think it is. No, that, that's fine. I, I wish yeah. um, people can uh, learn more from what you're mm -hmm. saying on the um, the videos. Uh, yeah. It definitely helps. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm new all, to all this, so I'm learning from, from all this. Thank you. Okay, anytime, my friend, anytime. Um, all right, so there we have it. We are in agreement. The load sheet is in agreement. Everything is in agreement. The, uh, the only thing that's obviously not in agreement is now the cargo. It says one ton. We clearly have more than one ton, but we also clearly have, you know, a whole different distribution of weights, uh, you know, based upon these values. So, guys, by all means, go play with it if you really want to go and get the cargo and the packs and the stuff going. It's, it's up to you. It's not for me to do that and that's it that's phew, that was a, a big mouthful but it's done so well done, Nico. take a deep breath Nico I'm and gonna come up can, can I ask you guys something can I just go quickly uh, just go and fetch myself something to drink some cool drink or something I'll be back in a minute I won't take long I really just need to get something down the throat i'll be back in a minute and then we can go do the flight because the next stage um i've actually printed my ofp the one that was on screen there is i obviously need to check the fuel burns and everything so we'll do that on the fly thank you nico take your time yeah i won't be long, won't be long. i was I've heard a real pilot say they only ever see the lump sums as far as loading passengers and everything are concerned. Generally, that balance inside is not a pilot's. That's a dispatcher's. Exactly. Well, also, believe it or not, the master... In a person steward on the aircraft is also responsible. Yeah, but he gets his information from the dispatcher. Oh, yeah, I'm not arguing that, John. The um, I guess you get a few passengers that may not turn up or are late or anything like that, or they miss the departure, so obviously the wait will... Yeah, think about well, it. Think about it. Think How many about... times... When you get on an aircraft, suddenly there's an area where there's no passengers. They put, <laughs> they specifically decided to have nobody in that particular area. Why do you think sometimes the economy, they will suddenly upgrade a passenger yep. to first class? Exactly. They want exactly. To move some weight. For Happened to me. Absolutely. Yep. And it's also been cases where I believe Southwest of airlines have been caught out several times where the cargo wasn't, or the baggage wasn't put in the correct hold and the aircraft hasn't been properly balanced for takeoff. Right, though, guys, I'm back. Thank you for the quick break there. Are you guys all right? Welcome back. I'm just thinking, thank God we've got you there, Nico. Oh, okay. So looking at this new change, uh, this is this is one of the major updates that, that it's had. At, yes. Uh, the, um, the distribution of load and everything. Nothing else really has changed apart from a, a few other issues that uh, has been resolved. But this is the big thing, as you say, Nico. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, 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 yes. And the reason yeah, they are not threw me off. Are, yeah, the reason that they've done this is because they want to balance it back to the actual handbook that came with this aircraft. All right. So was there anything wrong prior? Why did they? As you said, you touched on something. Why did they made this? big change uh, I mean it was working fine um, 
Well, well yeah. and, um, Christian, remember we've got three types of flight simmers. You've uh, you've got the yeah. you've got the entry level guys. You've got us in the yeah. middle, and then you've yeah. got the real world guys. All right. Zebo sure. does not cater just for anyone. He caters for all of them. The issue is when I speak to the real world pilots and the operators, and believe me, I do. I have quite a few of them that speak to me on a daily basis. Sure. Those guys want more. The entry level guys want less, and we in the middle are trying to do the best we can. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And and this is what you always need to remember when it comes to the Zebo. Zebo from day one said he's going to make the most realistic 737-800 that there is. And he's getting there. Now it takes time. Remember, he's the only coder. All right? I almost started mentioning everybody's names. I don't want to do that. The team, the, the rest of the team, including Twixter. Twixter is responsible for the flight model, the weights, the weight calculations, things like this. Zebo then goes and codes it. Yeah, so George, I'm with you. I also want more. I want it to be more realistic. The problem is having just one coder, okay, means that it's going to take longer than usual to get there but the benefit of having only one coder is there aren't many fingers in the pie that can you know make the pie go off so um, we we have to make deal with the timing that's involved zebo has got this massive plan in front of him but everything takes time that's all in my personal George. opinion Nico He's doing more than any other developer on an X plane at this stage, giving all the updates. Wow. So he's done a phenomenal crazy I, job. Wow. I going? would make the point that I think one of the things that's driven it is there are a number of payware aircraft now that have introduced loading into the EFB. Uh, and to keep track with that, to update Zebo to that same sort of level, he's introduced his own. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's that's also true. That's part of it. Um, and guys on chat, yes, I agree. I mean, um, yeah, the, uh, Zebo does phenomenal work. Um, Tim as well. I mean, if you look at the amount of hours Tim has put in here. Um, one of those things. Uh, this is where we're at, so let's enjoy where we're at. Go for it. Let's go flying. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Nico, I'm, I'm, it's just something that is something happening for me. I'm not sure if anyone else is experiencing this, but when I trigger the pushback, um, it, it, there is a better three second delay before anything happens it and is. it freezes and that's then unfreezes. Normal. I'm not normal. sure if that's something that you. It's, it's normal? Yeah, normal. That's okay, how it is. Good, because the good. plugin needs to kick in. The plugin needs to right. start upload, do its thing, you know, load into the sim. Yeah, okay. Your one seems a bit smoother than mine. Must be my, my background thing. Same with the uh, ground. Uh, ground uh, as well yeah everything needs a loading chance you know to get going mm. right Nico this has been on my uh, on my uh, <laughs> on my to-do list and I it's nothing big but uh, whilst you're doing your flow I do have a very quick question I'm hoping you can answer it um, is there a way to load the Zebo mod without the VOR switches turned on I'm not sure if it will save the state. You can go switch it off yeah. and go save the state in the uh, tablet. It won't, it won't. And go have a look see how that will work. I'm thinking it's more like a config file related, but that's right. That's well, you you change it and then save the state and then see if it yeah. overrides the config file because remember it creates its own config file. But I'm not sure if Zebo modeled it to that extent. That's what I'm trying to sure. say. Okay, there's one more thing I want to quickly show you guys. The question came up in the Zebo Pilots group earlier during the week. Somebody asked, how do I get it right that when I load my 
saved flight plan into the company route that it gives me SIDS and STARS and things like that. So there's two, two ways that I do it. The first export that I do um, is from PFPX. If I go and I say if a uh, what am I doing? If a O R F A L E zero one, and I put it into the company route, um, it's not going to give me uh, departures I and arrivals. I think it's manual. I think yeah. you need to do it manually. With this one, yes. But look at this. All right, let me just show you the departure as well. You see, nothing is selected. It's up to us to select no. it. But if we go back to uh, where is that now? Uh, let's go to the position and then the route. Right. Um, if we go and we say if a O R if a L E. Now this plan comes from Navigraph. If we now enter that one. You see, it already puts the runway in there. We can activate, execute. Now look at this. It's already decided which one, according to my planning. Wow. Okay. If I now go to the arrival, same thing. It's already put the sits and stars and everything in there for me. And the difference is simple. The one is done by PFPX. It's like in the old format. The other one is done by Navigraph, which is in the latest FMS format. And it includes all that for us. So I use SimBrief and it, it, I, I just import that flight plan and, that, and it doesn't put, gives the yeah. SIDS and STARS. So it's because it's still it's just the old format. So. Ah. And is there any way we can change it? Or is it... Um, no, it's no, it's SimBrief will have to reprogram it. Same with PFPX. I've gotcha. spoken to a lady of all people at PFPX. Can't remember her name. It's on email. Um, she promised that they will change the format in PFPX. Oh. But this was like Excellent. a year ago already or half a year ago already. Never heard anything from them again. Oh, okay. Hope, hopefully they'll they'll look into it soon. Yeah. So anyway, um, guys, in terms of the VOR, I just switch them off when I don't want them. Yeah. Um, I don't worry too much about that. Let's it's just an steps. extra admi admin overhead that you need to do. I'm thinking if you can save that in the state, uh, as with the parking brakes, like in a Zebo mm -hmm. tablet, there'll be a nice feature to have. Yeah. Well, the other thing that the real world pilots have told me is this RNP and ANP, it also does not come up by default. Right, um, that is also something that still needs to be sorted in the Zebo mod, according ah. to the guys I've spoken to. Um, something for the future, we're not going to worry about it right now. Uh, good morning, Christian. Paul. Good morning, Talk. Dominic. Yes, sorry, McDrain, go for it. Christian, talk to me after the stream. There are one or two more tricks you can do about this SIDS business, but I'll not go into it here. I don't want to complicate things. Yep. Uh, McTryon, thank you very much. I'll touch base with you offline. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Right, so let me just get back to my OFB, get my values here. Let's put it on the screen for you guys as well. So, our reserves will be 1.8. Cost. Did you want to bring up... Sorry. Yeah, there's a delay on my side. Sorry about that. I'll... Uh... I'll mute myself on, on uh, YouTube. Right. So, there's a cost index of 20. Our plan fill is uh, 2.1. And we're going to do 270 on the flight level. 323 at 12. And positive 15. See, Hakan is here as well. Right, there you go. All right, so uh, according to Topcat, we're going to use a takeoff one as a template. I'm going to leave it on climb. And there is no SEL value given to us. So I did a bit of investigating. When I did the planning, it was raining here. And because I specified that the runway is wet, all right, it limited the SEL. It just said no SEL available. 
so if you guys are wondering it's because um, it was wet it's not wet anymore we can actually change it but for uh, just the visual purposes and having it in the OFB I'm going to leave it as that and Nico just very quickly uh, whilst you're doing the flows uh, Topcat hasn't changed it's still the same profile is that correct um, no there is one line that has changed in Topcat. The, you need to change. Remember that extra 1,587 kilograms we were talking about? Your OEW weight is now considered to be 43,000 kilograms. So you need to do that. OEW, is that the dry operating weight? Uh, Basic operating weight. I'm not sure if that constitutes dry. Operating empty weight. Yeah, that's the one, operating empty weight. Uh, George, um, the CI that I choose is based upon Mango Airlines that I used to work for. So that's what they use. They use um, <clears throat> a 20 CI in South Africa. All right. The only problem, uh, the only problem is it allows for 42991 maximum. Doesn't matter. The uh, distance we're going to fly is less than one hour. You don't want to climb to Alangon. So the the uh, optimal uh, flight levels is between 270 and 330 when you fly this route. So no from real world. Okay, uh, next little trick that we're coming up to, guys. You can't click CG anymore. You're going to have to get your CG from your tablet now. So I'll take off CG is very important so that's 26.1 Nico where do you see your CG on your tablet on the tablet let me show you oh so you have to put it input it in there manually yeah. whereas yeah. before you just click it ah yeah. that's sneaky so Dominic you go to fuel weight and balance and there it's got the takeoff CG 26.1 so there's okay. a takeoff the yeah. one that that you want to enter yes and it also leaves the land CG out. Yeah, the land CG will come into play later because nothing there is nothing to calculate that yet. All right. But you, you said you trim for, for around five, roughly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my trim is 4.56. I'll make it just under five. Um, and yeah. then I'm not going to worry about page two for this stream. So let's just go to it doesn't make a big difference if you use page two. I'm just curious. It does make a difference, um, but not for the stream. It does make a difference. Sure. If you want to use noise abatement procedures, that's where you do it. If you want to um, really fine tune the takeoff toga situation, that's where yep. you use it. Otherwise, uh, of course. It's, it's not the end of the world. All right, so just under five. That CG info for me is the is the main part of today. Yeah. Is there any way? Um, I know in P3D you can uh, hover over the um, the the tiller where you can actually see the current uh, uh, units um, displayed in a little text box whilst hovering. Can you do that in Explain? Oh, sorry, I'm new to Explain. No, I don't think so. No, you can't do it. All right, that's something. Yeah. Nico? Yes. Um, do you remember the other day I was telling you whenever I start explain and I load the Zippo, uh, my landing lights are on. Yes. But even even with this new update yesterday, they're on. Um, okay, mine does not do that, so there must be something influencing it on your side. But we'll have I to have exactly the same problem. No, Follow that in fresh install guide because it worked for me every time. Yeah. Uncle John, you have the same problem? Yeah, but I think it's something to do that I, I need I need to save it in in, in the habitat. But in the habitat, there's not an option to say start the plane with landing lights on. No, I think what you guys need to do. Okay, let, let me bring this up here so I can actually show you properly. Yeah, Nico, when the, whenever there's a major update, like 3.9, for example, I just yeah. completely uninstalled everything, brand new, fresh install, backed up everything. That's what I would do, and it works every time. Yeah, but have a look here. Let me show you this, guys. Okay. It is. It took me half half a day to set everything up, but it's yeah. very worthwhile. Absolutely. 
Okay, I need you to to focus on this quickly. It's in my install guide anyway. All right. Mm -hmm. There are certain uh, preferences that are saved. There's a VR config preference. VR config. There's the 738 preferences file. Certain values of what is read and given to you is stored over here. All right. The next place where it does store them is you'll see there's the 737. There's your actual Zebo mod. You see there's quite a few different files over there. Each one of these ones, I described them in my install guide what they do. Each one of them has a reason for existence. But on top of that, if you go to your livery, each and every livery. Uh, Oh, did he change that? But they used to have each and every livery. Maybe it's not in this one. Let's just try the next one quickly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. This is the one we're flying now. You see, they, they are configuration files. Now, if you open them, you'll see there. It says either it's on or off. So let's have a look. See, there's the IRSs. There's... LED lights, I've selected LED lights. So you have to you have to take into account that you might have to go into your livery, delete these uh, files and recreate the state that you want. Once you have the state that you want, you need to go to page two, save load, quick save it. All right. There is aircraft uh, presets. So you can go and now you can save an aircraft specific preset for this aircraft. Oh, I've just clicked loaded. Oops, shit, I must have broken something. I clicked the wrong one. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. You know what I'm saying? So so go set your state um, to get this to load in now. All right. You're going to have to restart the aircraft. You have to physically go choose another aircraft, let it load, then Come back to the Zebo because this is not something that loads on the fly. All right, this is something that you need to restart the aircraft with. So I've just won myself a reconfiguration check, you know. But anyway, so please remember that's the save, that's the load. Damn it! But anyway, you see what I'm saying. So go through each livery, rather delete those little files, start over, save it, make sure you've got the aircraft state saved. And then the next time it loads, it will load it appropriately. You understand? So there's not much more you can do. Um, but if you are in a tight spot, do what you just said. Delete all those configuration files in the root of explain in the Zebo folder in every livery and start again. That's all. Because I guarantee you one of those files will contain the data that you are referring to. Also, in the options, if you're worried that landing lights and everything are on, just double check in the confirm configure aircraft configurations option that you've got cold and dark selected. Yes, very important. Make sure that and cold and dark say, is on. Yeah, and save it. Very important. Um, I had guys on the forum this week complain, and then he, the guy, the one guy, said that he needs to redo um, this whole rebooting of explain uh, or restarting of explain at every airport. Um, and the simple answer is he never saved it. You know, if you if you let the Zebo create the new nav data. Um, you have to restart the Zebo. <laughs> uh, he just never saved the fact that he created it. So every time he starts up his explain, he has to go through the whole rigmarole over and over and over again. <laughs> George, <laughs> you're funny. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. Let me continue with all my toys over here. Uh, we've got the APU on. All of these little thingies are on. Premier. Just make sure the display capture is off. Yeah, that's off. We can switch you on. <laughs> oh, and in case you guys didn't notice it, I haven't done the modification um, you know, on the cockpit. So we're back to the normal default clock PFD. The displays are still the orange ones, so that reminds me I need to go and modify my cockpit again with that little mod. 
Nico, are you uh, planning to come to the Las Vegas uh, Expo? If if somebody sponsors me, I'd love to come. <laughs> For sure. Looks I'll like you come. just volunteered to sponsor. You invited him. Yeah, yeah, that'll be so cool. Um, I'll stay with Cody, or at least in his garage or somewhere. <laughs> you know, we'll make a plan, have a nice boys um, convention there on our own as well, and then we'll see at the hotel when we need to be there. Uh, that'll be cool. Uh, what else? I think it's a great way of networking and meeting new streamers and people. Oh, absolutely, so absolutely. Anyway, Nico, sorry to deviate. Go ahead. No, it's fine, it's fine. I need to just keep my wits about me, so I need to request push back. Ground cockpit. Toe is driving up. Oh, we haven't set the Q&H. Uh, what is the Q&H here? 1019. Nico, as you suggested, you sh you must have, uh, if you're using Active Sky, obviously, weather engine, uh, you must have the running prior to starting x -Plan. Sorry, sorry, say again, sorry. You must have X, X what's it called? Um, Active Sky, you must mm. have that I running mean, before right. you load up x -Plan. Yeah, because then it will take care of any settings for you. Will there be a difference if you start it after you start up x okay. They shouldn't right. be, they should not be, but I'm Ready. just kidding. Sure, sure. Okay, we're taking it on way 03 today. Hey, Mersad. Yeah, George is exactly what I feel. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking. And obviously, we still start the Cessna 172 and then load the Zebo mod. Yeah. yeah. And you'll you'll let us know when we don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. And you may start engines. Um, it all depends on the load in your computer and the resources you have. I mean, there are a lot of guys that don't do it anymore just because they've got top-of-the-range i9 processors with, you know, 32 oh. or 64 gig RAM, you know, and yeah, two right. 20 AD TIs and things like that. They don't I need to do it. But, but, they also need to be careful because um, once they start overloading the SIM, you know, and it becomes more of a scenery simulator and a plug-in simulator than a flight simulator, you know, they can also run the risk of still getting the problem. So it all depends on each individual computer, really. It's not it's not just a, a blanket thing anymore. Um, the more C++ code the Zebo puts into the Zebo mod, the less likely it is that a silly Lua script is going to, um, a X Lua script is going to fail. And that was the reason why we said in the beginning to start doing that is because those uh, silly little scripts were top heavy and they were competing with loading the sceneries and everything and some of the guys had real potato pieces you know they slow and they don't do it that well to multitask so i still do and i don't take a chance i always do no i, I agree i do the same but uh, nico majority of us will probably have very similar specs um you know medium range um but um I, I wanted to ask a very quick question how long would you stay on the Cessna on the ground before you switch to the zebo until the hard drive stops spinning because you'll see on your pc the hard drive spins like hell to load the weather and the plugins and everything else so it's a good 20 30 seconds then it should be done okay so check the hard drive okay line. thank you Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Disconnecting tail. Stand by.
Plateau is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. Good morning, Kevin. Good. Nick, uh, which one would you set up your radar or turn on your radar and um, and terrain? Would it be at the uh, holding point yeah. or um, whilst taxing? Depends on the airport, but usually uh, at the holding point or just before. Okay. It's part of the runway entry procedure, so whether you do it on the taxiway uh, as long as you don't do it with people in front of you, it should be fine. Yeah, we don't want to fry them. <laughs> yeah, some people still want kids. <laughs> if you're on bat sim, it makes no difference because... No, but I'm thinking if we follow you... real world procedures, uh, I just want to make sure, because I guess every airline has their own policy. Yeah. But I normally do it just, just before the entry. It's just before the um, active uh, the runway, but um, some people do it earlier. I'm not sure. Twixter, if you are on stream with us, you don't have to say anything. But um, I hope I did the justice what I said this morning. I'm just thinking out loud now, guys. I did invite yeah, that's him. a big thing. I did invite him to join us. Uh, I've not heard from him yet, but uh, you know, it might be that he's just not, um, you know, wanting to talk on stream. I think everything you've said so far has covered probably most of it, Nico. Yeah. And it came across as, as I understand. Yeah. It. Nico, I noticed in certain countries, TARA um, is only uh, needs needs to be set on prior to departure. But even controllers, let's say for example Australia, they they are um, very uh, against setting TAA altitude on or off. Um, it it all so depends. Sure no, it all depends. Process. It all depends on whether the airport is fitted with ground radar. Okay, now I spoke to a local South African controller oh, probably a year ago and I used the term ground radar and he was looking at me as if I'm the craziest fool on earth. <laughs> he did not understand what I was talking about. So any, anyway, after me explaining what I perceived to be ground radar, he said, oh, we call it and he gave it a name. Now, whatever the hell that name is, that could also, I suppose, differ between country to country and operator to operator. But the fact of the matter is, when there is ground surveillance, I think that's what they called it, okay? Um, when there is some form of ground radar, ground surveillance, whatever, they want you to switch it on because it obviously interacts with the ground yeah. system. When there is no thing like that, they won't know whether it's on or not. But the approach controller checking the radar, he's going to see it. And then what happens is yeah. you can create confusion. And that's what you yes. don't want. So it all yes. depends. Yeah, so it's normally stand by until you reach the holding point and then bang on TRA. Otherwise, yeah. it really depends on the... Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough call, tough gig, and it depends on the country and the region, the policies. Yeah. The, one of the reasons in different countries for having ground surveillance radar is if you have an airfield where you have poor visibility conditions, it allows you to see aircraft when they're out of sight of the exactly. for both yeah. reasons of fog, etc. Yeah, exactly. Like Nico said, you know, uh, an approach controller could see everything on ground, so that'll yeah. be confusing. You know? So you yeah. don't want that. 
Will you please listen to me? Uh, the click spots is difficult for me to reach sometimes, and that's what happened there. So that's all set. We don't need that anymore. That's been done. Pressurization is set. That's one thing Batsim hasn't updated yet. Yeah. Because at the present time, they only have on and off fatigue. Exactly. Yeah, so again, there's now going to be a difference between the real world and um, Batsim. Just for that simple reason. All right, okay. I think I've done most of everything we can put on our weather and terrain. There aren't any mountains in this area, so it's irrelevant really for terrain, but we do it for special effect, you know, it looks nice. So. I noticed you're not using the multi-mode receiver, Nico. No, what <laughs> what happened was, um, remember it's a new install. I haven't really gone through all the settings and set up everything to be the way it should be. That's not important. Not today. Yeah. We're just going to do an ordinary ILS, so it's fine. Alright, there we go. Approaching zero three left. If when anyone we... else got any questions, please jump in. Yeah, we'll do. Um, who asked about the two legs? I don't know, maybe I'll do a flight back to Joburg, we'll see. Um, it all depends on time and timing, we'll see. Where did I read that? That was chronic, okay. Chronic, I'll see, I'll see. Um, Dimitri, yeah, he said he's and ASR, yeah, anyway. That's so your course, you, would, would you set your course to that runway heading no, normally, or is no, it uh, based course, on the depart? The course has got nothing to do with anything at this uh, stage of flight. The course is for your runway heading when you do your landing ILSs and things like that, or when you right. track a VOR or something. If you were tracking a VOR, it would be important, and this point in time right. means nothing. Alright, so let's do it. Some water pouring down still. It's probably damp. Yeah, it's still it's it's still rainy, but yeah, the uh, weather hasn't really cleared. So you would take your hands off the uh, throttles after V1. a little bit and gear up hmm. okay this is the first time I'm actually flying this flight model feels very really nice actually very nice I'm yet to try it so you say it's a new flight model yeah yeah have you I heard from tweets to what he tweeted or not, Nico. I'm not saying discuss it here, but do you know any what? No. Um, apart from what I read, what you guys read, I am not privileged to anything more. Um, Flight Deck okay. Sam summed it up uh, in his press release. It's about what I know as well. Okay, George, enjoy. If you fly, be safe.
Nico, do you know anything about XFMC? No, I use WebFMC. XFMC, the yeah, last time. Sorry, Web, WebFMC, sorry. Yeah, Web. yeah, I use that. Why? What do you need to know? Uh, I downloaded it yesterday on a Samsung tablet mm. uh, and I followed the instruction the guy was saying on like tapping the screen, uh, but I can't get it to connect. Okay, what you need to do is you need to put the plugin into explain. All right, and then you need to make sure that your firewall is not blocking the plugin. Now your tablet and your PC needs to be on the same Wi-Fi network, all right, or at least network, whether you use Wi-Fi or not. It's irrelevant. It needs to be on the same network. It will then automatically find each other. But if your PC and tablet is not on the same network, and if your PC is blocking the ports in the firewall for the plugin, it won't work. So okay, so yeah, that. I I um, was on the same uh, Wi-Fi network. Mm. Uh, I opened the port in the firewall, like he mm. says, uh, 1500 or something like mm. this, uh, and still wouldn't find it. Yeah, are you sure you installed the plugin correctly? Sorry. Are you sure you installed the plugin correctly? Uh, the plugin that I downloaded from the org into uh, resources plugins. Yes. Make sure that it is actually active. I'm not sure if we'll, it will actually show you. But if you go to admin, it should be in there. One of the easiest mistakes is to have it nested within the file itself. Yep. Just make certain that the breakdown yep. file system reads. Yeah, your, your folders need to be correct. There you go, there's WebFMC. It's definitely here and it's running, so you need to make sure. Yeah, Kevin um, asks a question, is your tablet discoverable? Can the rest of the network actually see your tablet? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I need to check that. Yeah, mm. good point. Okay. Nico, I've got a question when you have some time. Um, well, it depends on what it is. Um, I just want to run through all my settings here yeah, as go, well. Go, go through your procedures, yeah. Do you do, you do that? Um, actually, the question is, when do you need to release the cabin crew? Uh, I do that after 10,000 feet. Once I go through 10,000, what I do is I switch off all the lights, switch off the continuous ignition, it goes to auto, and then I release the seatbelts. It's all at 10,000 and above. Okay, so you release the seatbelts and the cabin crew at the same time. Yeah, yeah same thing. Release the cabin crew, it sounds like you can lock them in the loop. We can try. Not like for them to do their normal departures, brief departure things that they need to do. Uh, but the passengers are still having the seatbelts on, that's what I'm saying. Well, I put it to auto and then the system runs it for me. I don't put it to off. Okay. I put it to auto. Yes. I find, Nico, that even after you pass 10,000, if you, so even if below 10,000, if you release the seatbelts to off, nothing happens. But once you pass 10,000, the, the, the announcement happens. So I'm it's not possible. sure there's a the delay there. No, it's possible that that's the way the script was written to look at that. Yeah, yeah. Clouds looking good, Nico. Yeah, thanks. I oh, see so you're doing it now, Nico.
Nico, you're not using the honeycomb by any chance? No, it's only coming in February. I'm waiting for it. Okay. Yes. If you're thinking of buying it, go for it. I will. I will. I'm just saving all my money for, for my overtime with my job to get it. Believe me, it's uh, not not a cheap device. Yeah. And this will be very my very first flight joystick flight, whatever you call it, because I only have a joystick and throttle. There's no pedals, nothing. So for me, it's a game changer for me. So it will be the first for me. Um, Kevin, um, I use a lever on my Cytec throttle as the tiller. So I don't need it to be on your. Your is when you use your pedals. Um, when it's on oh, on, yeah. I use the tiller lever. Yeah, I found that as well. Thanks, Nico, for pointing that. And by the way, this is not a game. It's a simulator. I'm just letting everyone know it's a simulator. <laughs> yeah. No, it really bugs me. Everyone says it's a game. It's not. It's actually a simulator. It's a simulating real-world environment. You mean real pilots, they call it a profession and not a game. Let's not start the story. It's not a game. <laughs> yeah, guys, please. We've had a good stream thus far. We don't want to annoy people now. All right, well, that should take care of the MMR and all the other nice to have. My fuel is back to where it should be. Perfect. Nico, so I'm using the Vivid preset that you suggested, mm. uh, and also the um, XP Realistic with the winds turned off. That's it. Nothing else. Is that is that what you're using as well? Yeah. Yep. How's we go? Yeah. Mm. By the way, just for info, your stream is rock solid that we're seeing and everything, every way. You have no idea how glad I am. Uh, it looks very good. taking screenshots guys um, that's why I come in so close I want to get all the information I need uh, 
Uh, Kevin, no, I have not. And it doesn't matter because we are all suffering because of the three breakages in that undersea cable. So, um, the... <coughs> I think if my memory serves me right, we only have six pipes coming into South Africa and um, one of them is the Department of Defense and the rest are now private, you know, pipes that come into South Africa and two of the pipes are now broken. So the, the problem now is the congestion, I mean the ping is terrible and everything because now everything is now being forced through the four remaining streams or three remaining ones if you remove the DOD one because they weren't allowed to use this so we literally down to to the last three <coughs> uh, pipes and with everybody on the internet the whole time it, it's difficult so obviously some sites work some sites don't Twitter for me was off for two days. I couldn't get to Twitter. It started this morning. I, I was able to see Twitter again, for instance. Um, Facebook is very slow. Um, the fact that this stream actually works tells me that there must be a local ingress server in South Africa because otherwise it wouldn't have worked. I couldn't get Twitch to work at all because that packet needs to go to the UK. It goes to London to get into the uh, Amazon stream. So... Um, thank goodness we have YouTube and whatever plans uh, Google made for that Nico could I ask a quick question with regards to the winds mm -hmm. um, at which point and what levels of winds would you enter into the forecast okay it's part of the descent planning and it depends on what program you used to create your OFP because okay. it comes from the OFP basically. Um, if you are using uh, Active Sky, you can actually get the current winds because the ones on the OFP are a couple of hours old. Mm. Um, but if you use the one from Active Sky that's current, um, then it's up to yep. you. So I, let's say. Let's say Active Sky, for example. Yeah. Would you enter the fly level three zero zero two four zero below no, transition no. altitude? Because the there's so many levels yeah, of wind. Look at, look at the screen. Um, what I would do is I take six, nine, and twelve. Right. Would you look, look? Let's say if you click on the conditions tab. And no, enter the there. ICAO for the airport, and um, then that will give you the wind. Go, go to briefing. If you click on oh, so that means you have to. No, you don't do anything. Yeah, you you have briefing. to input your flight plan then. Of course you do. You can't fly with Active Sky without putting a flight plan in. I mean, the moment you put the flight plan in, everything changes. You have to have the flight plan in because that, apart from the fact that your weather all of a sudden becomes accurate, you also get the flight watch. So you can actually tune your radios yep. to listen to the weather. So, and this is your whole breakdown. If you look at the screen now, it shows you the whole breakdown. And then I select 6, 9 and 12. And then it's up to me to decide, do I take it at the airport or do I take it at the last waypoint? Now, there's a hell of a debate that we can go into why the one not and the other but I mean for our purposes yeah I'll take the last waypoint and there you go so there's six nine and twelve thousand feet and there's the wind so if you so I don't think I'm, I'm understanding so if you click on conditions and yeah. you enter the IK of the airport it yeah. gives you the winds yeah but that's just a should we do point. that or this as you, as you uh, point I out. use it this way because you're not going to fly at 6,000 feet at the airport you're not going to fly at 9,000 feet at the airport you're not going to fly at anything more than 2,000 feet at the airport so the calculations that the Boeing needs needs to be done before the airport which makes this the logical one you don't take the airport one you know you're never going to fly those conditions at that level because you need to land there so the last place that is measured that has any value to the fmc and any calculations is the last waypoint just prior just after top of the sun yeah well it's the last one before the airport so that's that's about the best i can suggest 
in, no, in, in the FMC, I should say. In the FMC, you have three three layers that you need to enter. Yeah, so let's do it. So we go so. to destination and then forecast. So what I'll do is I'll put in 12, 1, 2, 3. We will put in 9, 1, 2, 3. And then we'll put in 6, 1, 2, 3. All right. How did you get to 1, 2, 3, sir? It's the 1, 2, 3 is the zeros. I'm counting the zeros. So it's 12, 1, 2, 3, zeros. 9, 1, 2, 3, zeros. 6, 1, 2, 3, zeros. Because... Sorry, I'm not, fo I'm not following you. So. You, you. You are listening too finely. You, you need to understand it's 6,000. So what do you get? It's a 6 and 3 zeros. So I'm counting, as I'm pressing 0, I'm counting 1, 2, 3. Then it's 9,000, which is 3 zeros. So I'm counting... 0, 1, 2, 3. You understand? Look at the screen. Mm, no. It's changed to FL. No, I'm, I'm completely zero lost. No, I have no idea what you're doing. Watch the screen, the Christian. Watch the screen. I am. I so, am. I so, am. So, go 12. Look at the zeros. 1, 2, 3 zeros. That gives you 12,000 feet. Because it's Why above... Why did you select that? because that's what's available look at the screen it gives us the winds at 6 9 and 12 so i'm starting at 12. there on the screen okay can you bring bring up this, the active sky yeah it's waiting there's a bit of a 10, 10 second delay on my side so, Sorry, but... uh, so how did you end up to one two zero i'm just trying to figure that out because it gives you 6,000, 9,000, and 12,000. Then it gives you 18, 24, 30. Oh, now, now the pennies drop. Yep, okay. yep, Because gotcha. it's yep. all irrelevant. The, the rest are irrelevant. Right, right. They're right. totally irrelevant. See, my, so. problem, my problem was I did not use, I didn't file a flight plan mm -hmm. within Active Sky. I just used the local aerodrome. And then I selected the altitude. Yeah, well, there you go. So now. At the last waypoint, we've got 6,000, 9,000, and 12,000. That is why I entered it. Because it is above the transition altitude, it will automatically change it to flight level. Flight level, and there you've got 6,000. Hello, Martin, and hello, David. <coughs> so, anyway, now what we do is we simply read the values. So we've got 313 at 1 knot. 172 at 3 knots and 1 could, at 3 knots. And that's what we ended. Could you go could you re, could you go to that again please for me? Okay, count so it again. Count it. So again, how did you get get to 6, 9 and 12? Because those are the only relevant values below Where? our flight level. We are flying at flight level 270, right? So, yeah. we can't use 30, we can't use 34 or anything higher. We could perhaps use 24 or 18, but that's too yeah. close. That's just too close. So, the, the ones that is available to us are those ones. That's gotcha. why we okay. use them. At this stage, I understand now. So, you start on the winds aloft from 6, 9 and 12. Yep, yes. All right. And then where? What do you do from there? Then from I go to the another. last waypoint before the airport and I select those values. Okay, now let's have a look where that is. Valley, yeah? Yeah. So the last so waypoint is app map. So that, okay. Yeah. Three, three. At one. 172 at three and one at three. So there's almost no way. And all we do but is. But what we level? Go it doesn't you. matter what level. No, eh? no, it tells you. It does matter. Because you need to match 6, 9, and 12. Look at the columns. The column values are 6, 24, and 44. 6, 20, that is on 6,000. That is on 24,000. And that is on 44,000. You understand? Look at the look at the way yeah. it tells you. It displays it for you. So oh, the first value is columns. 6. Yeah. Uh, columns and lines. Gotcha, gotcha. So now we go and we take that value that goes into 6. Yep. 313 three at, at freaking 1. So we enter it. 
the next one is 17283. And we probably so I'm watching missed, a stream. Yeah, I'm, we probably missed the top of descent. Hold on, hold on. I just need to set this thing up. The stream is 10 seconds. Just always remember. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, I hope we didn't miss the top of descent. No, it's still coming. Thank you. All right. So the next value that we're going to take now is one at three. So you missed one two zero. So that is what it is. Can you can you show that on 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 the screen? Yeah, With zero coming. zero one yeah. three knots. Yeah. That is. So current Q and H and I have no idea what the ISA is so I'm not going to enter that but that's it that that is exactly how it works if we go back to the briefing I'm going to highlight it for you you count to 10 and then you just read it there you go Okay. Ah, oh, so that's how you do it. Wow, okay, I've been doing it all wrong all these years. You see, Nico, I used the conditions of the local airport and then got the levels of altitude and then put in the winds there. My argument is just you're never going to fly at the airport at that waypoint being the mm. airport at those levels. Yeah, it's just education on my part. That's what I need to learn. Thank you for correcting me on that. I've learned something today. Upon many things that you've taught. Alright, so where are we? Anyone else got any questions? Yeah, Nico, uh, sorry to butt in, but I've, I've put the little landing landing weight altitude. I don't know if you got a vibe or a private message, but that seems to work for me. Um, hoping maybe you can look into sorry, that or sorry. if you... No, say again. Say again. Start from the beginning of the sentence. Oh, I made a little landing uh, landing calculator. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually got a message from you at some point in time. I was just too busy to yeah. just end it. I'll have to go look no. at I realize that that's my apologies my friend I'm so sorry but I'm just wondering would you be willing to look into this or is this accurate because it's just one of the calculators that I found on YouTube from a real world pilot that helped him um, help us as Simmons so well, I'm just wondering if the Zebo model works with this I don't know we'll have to test it and then secondly I do have Top Cat already so it'll depend on what you give us to see what the story is um, but I'll have to look. I'll have to go look at yours. Sure, sure. It's just a good way to compare. It's very, very simple. If if you have ten seconds, yeah, we, not we right can now. compare not what right what now. you do now and we. Okay. No, 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 not right now. I actually, I'm not going to work out anything for the landing. What I've done is just all mental arithmetic. So I'm not going to use even Topcat for that right now. Um, <clears throat> just need to get all my information today quickly.
Kleur Albabina. Uh, Kevin, I'm glad you learned something. Every every flight seems to be some learning that we do, so that's awesome. I also like it. Alright, the other thing that I'm checking is whether the setting has been repaired. So, um, I've currently got my throttle levers where those little blue triangles are and um, it's actually ignoring them. On the previous two models of the Zebra, it didn't ignore them, so it created a bit of a problem with the VNAV going down in the descent. I see it looks better today. Perfect in actual fact. So. Mm, I forgot to switch on my orthos. Mm. Oops. Hello, sir. <coughs> Nico, you have time or are you busy now? I'm just quickly busy. Give me a second. Okay, Dominic, ask your question, then um, we can look at this landing calculations. Um, on Topcat, oh, sorry, not Topcat, uh, when I come into land with the Zebo uh, and I take control uh, of the throttle, sometimes it doesn't slow down. Okay, that I'll have to see that to understand it because um, the throttle is not supposed to, if you have the correct settings, it's not supposed to have any influence unless when you look at the screen now, you'll see it says armed on the primary flight display. When it's in this arm mode, um, you will have an influence. If, you, if I touch my throttle right now, Right, let me in actual fact do it. You'll see the engines will spool up immediately. So I'm going to pull it to idle and let it quickly come down before it accelerates too much. Um, if it is in FMC speed mode, the FMC will take care of it. There or is also a retard mode that means it needs to slow down, but that's all automatic. But in arm mode, the pilot is in command of your throttle. Alright, it's up to the pilot to put it in the right place. So I'll have to see a video or watch you do it on a stream or something to see what you're doing wrong. But basically, <coughs> what I would suggest to anybody is when you are at the top of descent or just before top of descent, just pull your throttles to idle. When you get to about 2,000 feet, put your throttles, that those little blue triangles, put them in line with your throttle uh, the auto throttle line so that when you land you actually have your reverse thrusters because if you re remain in the idle position and you land your reverse thrusters will not work um, my trying was good enough to teach me that trick okay um, so just even with even with reverse we even with throttles uh, throttle lock on yes it simply won't work you need to tell the system that you are reducing thrust so it needs to see you go to idle and then it needs to see that you actually engage reverse thrusters so, um, so i'm going to talk you through as i as i continue the descent and as i get close um, i'll talk you through how i set my throttles currently they're in idle you can see that the engine is in idle it's in arm mode uh, i've uh, pulled them back to idle those little uh, blue triangles and then later on they usually go and sit at about 60 percent approximately 60 percent so we'll talk you through as i do that 
Okay, so just after top descent or before top descent, before. put him back to idle? Yeah, before. It's always before. better before. If you start your descent and those throttles influence the VNAV code, you're going to log a call and skip and go crazy again because, oh, the Zebo is not slowing down, it's not doing this and that and the other. But it's your hardware that's interfering with the code. And the only way to yeah. stop it is to just pull it back to idle. Um, today I tested it, it seems to work. If you go to your configuration, you go to hardware, this auto throttle engage lock throttle needs to be on because that usually also takes care of the hardware interfering. Um, but like I said, in the previous two models, it did not. Um, it seems to be fixed now, so cool. Hello, in pre Ryan. Yeah, earlier I got a uh, um, um, drag required message. Well, the drag required is a legal requirement. It's got nothing to do with drag, really. It's a legal requirement so that you can't go in Suboing for losing your wings mid-flight huh. because you were stupid and you didn't slow down. That's a legal requirement. It's got nothing. There's no calculation that tells it to say that. It's a legal requirement. I just, um, just, just pull the speed brakes, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Martin, it is part of the descent checklist. If I bring my checklist up now, I'll show you guys. Um, Interesting, does um, Zebo have a preferred checklist flow um, other than the Boeing. PDF that you've created? No, it uses the Boeing, Boeing flow. Yes. So if you use the FCOM or the um, operator uh, manual from your airline, it's the same thing. It's a Boeing. Okay. It's about the Boeing. Alright, so here is the descent preparation checklist. The first thing we need to find out is the given as the weather basically at our arrival airport. We need to know what the minimums are. This is what, let me just move my view a little bit. Come now. Alright, so there we've got the minimums that we've set. Uh, the nav 1 and 2 has been set. You saw me do that. The course uh, values have been entered to for 3. Uh, we always use the one that's given to us here on the FMC because of the discrepancy with the Navigraph and explain data. Then if we go to the actual FMC, we've set all those things already. Then we reset the MCP, then we do the auto brake thing. Um, and then as you go through, there's your descent checklist. Um, a couple of things that you need to figure out there as well. Um, I just uh, realized um, in this version of the checklist, I did not put uh, switch your throttle levers to idle. It used to be in there, but because of that setting, when Zebo introduced the setting, I removed it. So that's a good, good suggestion. Practice. Yeah, just pull it to idle because the moment you pull it to idle, you know it's not going to interfere with it. And how how will it how will it affect on the flare though? Obviously. Nothing and do anything on the flare because remember look at always as we do this follow this command there as it's changing from armed to fmc speed to retard to whatever you'll see the different modes the fmc and the, the flight computer goes into all right what you need to then also do is follow my little blue triangles you'll see i'm going to put them uh, to match the actual throttles at about 60 percent later on once they are in position all right, and I don't touch them again, and I get to 1,000 feet above the ground, I switch off the auto throttle. All right, I don't touch my no. hardware throttle. And because they are at 60%, when I do my flare and I pull them back, the engines will respond appropriately, and it will then also allow me to have um, the reverse thrust. But, but if that you're... That was my question. But, yeah. Sorry, but if you're... If you're if you uh, Chris, he idle. hasn't got there. He said he was going to talk you through it on on the, when he gets to that point. Yeah, all the horses. Just just wait a minute, both of uh, everybody. Oh, everybody. oh, no, no need to shout. No need to shout. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. So 
when we get there, um, I'll show you guys. It's going to ask me to put the speed brakes out now. Anyway, we want to slow down. So. Now, it's just a question because you suggested put it into idle and then when you flare, then they're already in idle, so you no, have to obviously move them up again. Of course, we do that. You'll see we have to match them later on. You'll see. Okay, yeah, so. yeah. No need to shout. Sorry, sorry. Someone's shouted so loud in my ear. Yeah, but he, Nico did say he was going to explain all that on the approach for you. That's fine, guys. Just cool it. Don't worry. We'll get there. Um, I'm slowing down to match the speeds now because this is going to be a sharp turn in uh, to get to what we need to do. I've just realized, and I didn't notice that earlier, but there seems to be a little bit of a problem over there. Now, this, for me, this defeats the whole purpose of understanding the throttle lock. So if I bullet to idle, no. up full throttle, it has no, 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 no response. So what's the purpose of putting no. it back to idle if it has, if you, if you, if because you... Because in the previous two models, setting. in the previous two models, it didn't work. So there's an amount of common sense you need to employ here, all right? You need to understand one thing. The first thing you need to understand is yeah. your throttle, your hardware throttle can absolutely <coughs> destroy the Zebo VNAV code, all right? And then it's I not a Zebo problem, right? So, so there's one of two things. Either the auto throttle lock setting works or it does not. In the previous two models, it did not. So I had to pull it to idle. All right. It's like you're the pilot in command. You have to do what you have to do. All right. If you get a situation like this, because this is what happened. Look at look at the screen. Count to 10. This is what happened. The uh, one engine went to 60%, the other one went to idle. Now you're off balance. You are busy. Look how it's interfering with my VNAV code. It's now it's now messing the Zebo code around. So the only way to do it as the pilot in command is to pull it to idle. That is now going to bring us back. Now we have to use the okay. speed brakes. Okay. Now in this model, the auto lock throttle seems to work again. This is why I did not need to pull it to idle. Now that okay. it is in idle, all right. Now that it is in idle, we now need to um, do the next thing. The next thing is we are going to have to match the actual engine um, throttle position. Okay, because this thing is now moving according to the Zippo VNAV code. So it's going to increase the speed at some point in time shortly. It's going to increase the speed. Right? Once it increases the uh, N1, we have to follow it. We can't do it right now because we are in ARM mode. If we do it right now, we're going to mess up the code again. So it's, it's just these little things that you need to just understand and go watch the video afterwards again a couple of times you'll see there's another deceleration point coming there again but at some point in time it's going to lift the engine in one and that's what i'll talk you through so just bear with me it's coming i i haven't had that problem personally Nico. Thousands if i was to move the throttle have. it would stay fixed that's fine that's i fine. i manually changed the uh, the speed on approach that's yeah. what i done all right. Well, I don't. I it use worked. VNAV. I use VNAV. Okay. I see. Right. So I'm going to go to the approach mode. Hopefully that'll take care of whatever that little bug is. I missed it earlier. I don't know how I missed it, but I did. So we're going to take the ILS and the glide slope and everything now that I wonder if that's part of the missed approach. I think that could be part of the missed approach. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, there's our airport. That's our final approach. Fix this FF24. And we need to be configured before we get there. So, again, I'm going to use my speed brakes. Make sure I keep the speed intact because we need to pull flaps one now. Thousand to go. Again, this is when you use your rings. You can, that can help. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah. 
see now if you look at the mode it's gone to FMC speed so the FMC is controlling the speed now if I move my throttle you see there's no influence while it was on arm I was able to influence the actual N1 and the throttle now there's nothing happening because it's on FMC speed that this scenario is what you get when you enable auto engage lock throttle so in other words it re refuses to listen to your actual hardware throttle that I'm busy moving there. And what if you used to do it to manual input on speed? For example, ATC would say no. maintain 210 knots. No, well then uh, it will stay on FMC speed because it will use whatever you put in the MCP. It will not go to ARM, in other words. So it's going to listen to the MCP. It will not listen to your um, hardware throttles. Okay, cool. It's just, uh, uh, it's important to note to the, the two differences um, for people flying online and offline. Sure. Now what you can see is the FMC has kicked us to MCP speed, which means that we are now in control of that MCP and we need to set our value. So I'm going to put it at VRF plus minus 5 and then I'm going to allow the aircraft to slow down and then I'm going to pull my last two little bits of flaps. And there's our final approach fix right in front of us and at that point in time we need to be configured for landing right now can you see the n1 is increasing n1 is now increasing greatly because it needs to now get in line with the speed that is required so 153 needs to be met so it's increasing then it's going to slow down a bit and then it's going to stabilize for us at that point when it stabilizes all i do is i put my little blue triangles right on that line as close as possible to what I can get it right then I, I'm going to leave it there physically I'm going to leave it there now I depend upon throttle noise lock and the number to prevent any jitters and jumping around on these levers okay and I also depend on auto in, uh, throttle engage lock throttle so that it will not interfere with the Zebo code right so those two things are now in play I've aligned my little triangles close as possible okay so I've taken it off idle it's now in position okay it's right there you can see it's very far from idle and now I just wait it out so your throttle in the middle or is still idle no my throttle is right there look the the blue triangles is where my hardware throttle is and the line there that 62% N1 is where the Zebo throttle is so I need to put my blue triangles on those lines at this point in time I need to match in other words from his physical throttle he has moved that up to match yes, yes. so Stop those it. two Thank things you. are going to match John. Right, so we've got our speed brakes armed, we've got um, uh, the auto brake armed, we've got the lights, we've got the backs, uh, ignition is fine, gear down 3 green, uh, missed approach, um, altitude set. So when it gets to... Uh, which, hmm? which point would you disconnect? That's user discretion. I usually disconnect my auto throttle at about a thousand feet. When, it, when I get that message that... Um, uh, the, you'll, you'll hear the guy talk just now at a thousand feet. When I get that message, I, I basically just get the throttle. And do you That's recycle the uh, flight directors? No. Why must I do that? Approaching two, four. Okay, all I so did I've was auto throttle. Auto throttle. I've heard, just heard some conflicting stories on forums about flight directors. That's why I have to recycle. No, it's, uh, it's all scenario based. This scenario doesn't call for it. Normal operation does not call for it at all. The only time you will really do it is when you've lost your autopilot. What you can do is if we disable the autopilot now. Right there you go. So minimums. I can just land.
Is that by disconnecting or disabling it? There's two ways. I disconnected the bot. I've got a button. You see it there, you'll see it in 10 seconds. I disconnect the, the bot. I actually pressed it twice so it went back, but I'm supposed to press it once. And if I press it again, it silences the wall. 80 knots. 9.5. So it's like not it's not the command, it's not the command button, it's the yeah. uh, little That's white bar. white yeah. button. Yeah. So you do it twice, yeah? You do it twice on the white bar? Yeah, or the the joystick button I have to press twice. The first one disconnects it like that, and the second one when it goes back disables that alarm, otherwise it goes yeah, 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 and yeah, your ears the whole time. Nicole. So yeah. I don't have that set on my throat throttle, so I, I I just I just click the command button that I'll disconnect it. Is that? And then yeah, just just explain the warning. Yeah, just it's it's easier for me to press the button twice instead of reaching for the mouse and going and pressing the silence uh, button. You know, the sorry, Dominic, yeah. you're trying to say something. Yeah, I was trying. Uh, this this was my question earlier on. But uh, you answered it. That, but just to make sure, the FMC kicks you into the MCP, correct? Yes, MCP speed. Yes. Uh, that does that automatically because I usually disengage and press the speed no. button. No, it does it automatically. That's what I do. Um, there are certain approaches. Certain of the RNAV approaches will not do that. It will actually manage your speed to the ground. Okay, but on the ILS that we do, it will kick you out to MCP speed, and then you have to change it yourself okay that answered my question because when i was cl clicking on speed and then trying to adjust my speed manually with the knob mm -hmm. it wasn't slowing down yeah got it got it well, i hope this helps it does thank you no worries um weather jr you'll have to use a little bit more variable values in your landing. <laughs> the score. Because it's sounding like a record these days. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, let's get going. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, uh, Martin, whatever. And let's see. Yeah, Nico, I'm using a different approach, but it, I think we all come to the same conclusion in terms of the speed on approach. The, this is not about right and wrong. I've said it many times on... No, no, no. I, I get that. It's SOP. just a, it, it's a teaching method, and yeah. I think what you're doing is, is fantastic. Uh, but I've learned method B, and you're mm. teaching method A. Yeah. So I guess uh, but we all arrive to the same conclusion. Yeah, as long as you don't bang and the guys don't die, then yeah. everything is okay. And John, please don't shout at me next time. That's not nice. Like guys, I use a, a ring method, so 5 nautical miles or 15 nautical miles, uh, within 5 nautical miles I must have my flaps 5 extended, by 15, sorry, by 15 nautical miles I have my flaps 5 extended, uh, and then by a certain distance uh, I have to have uh, my full flaps or fully landing configuration set, and that also depends and Nico, you were doing an ILS approach, which is, mm. which is a precision approach. There's also a non-precision approach, which needs to be obviously configured differently based on the distance and the speed. So um, there's variations of that. So I think what you've highlighted is fantastic. Uh, but uh, the, what I'm using, um, I think, uh, as I said, method A and B, um, they both work, but it's the way you've been taught. And it yeah, depends course. on the airline that and airline that you work for yeah. or airline that you've been trained for and the standard operating procedures for that aircraft. Yeah. 
Well, the standard operating procedure that we use comes from Jorge, which is the original test pilot for the Zebo team. And he taught us to use the 753 rule. So we always teach the guys when it's an actual, you know, teach stream, you know, um, educational yep. stream. Yep. That's good. To use good. 753. So it will get to that in, the, in some more of the training at some point. In because... Time. Some airlines, as you know, and some virtual airlines, as I know, Nico, you belong to um, a virtual Ryan. So uh, I'm, I'm not saying commenting if it's a virtual one, but some air, virtual airlines have a minimum, like if it's a non-precision approach, you must, must have 40 feet to the minimums. Yeah. So you have to add yeah, that. That's... So there's a little gotcha there. You have to add that. So it's yeah. just something technically there for people who are, we you know, uh, want to do some sort of uh, precision uh, if, approach. If my VAs that I fly for want to be that petty, I will not fly for them. That's one of the reasons, <laughs> that's one of the reasons um, I left some already because that's just being petty. Um, we yeah, here no, to enjoy ourselves. Yeah. We're not professionals. We, we, no, it's, it's just just knowledge, knowledge sharing. That's knowledge sharing. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm trying to educate people and help people. Um, some aircraft, as I said, uh, you don't have to rely specifically on the charts because those charts, based on the airline, uh, say okay, if it's a GLS approach, add 40 feet to that. That'll be a minimum. So it's just something to. It adds more challenging. That's all. A challenging approach. My friend, three quarters of the people on the street cannot fly this aircraft like I'm flying it now they are here to learn if I have to add those kind of little niggly things every time I'm gonna lose viewers people on are gonna <laughs> run away because it's just too much it's it's not what well, um, it's not why the guys are here it's not what we want to teach them once they have a year or two's experience they can come back and say okay Nico what about yeah. that we can take it further but no I agree I agree completely I agree completely. It's just there for people who are interested yeah. to know. That's all. Okay, people. Thank you very much again. Nice uh, stream. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Tom. Bye-bye. Stay well. Bye-bye. Okay, good night. See you, say good night to everybody. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> as long as you enjoyed it, Alba Pino. Oh man, don't do that. Don't do that. Now that we've got this upright bar here. Oh man. Yeah, that was a very nice flare there. Yeah, I liked it. In fact, what I saw in the cockpit as we came in, it was very good. I think John was a little unfair. Oh, she's so you, so, so you say. So you say.
last time. Let's just take this look. Oh, we got the landing lights on. Oh. Yeah. It's to scare away the birds, my train. See, I've learned to pull that slider fully to the right, then come out of the replay mode, eh? Yeah, you need to do that, yeah. Uh, well, mind you, maybe there's no elevation difference on this airport, but it's a good practice to get into. Yeah. Right, so... The estimated fuel burn, according to my previous PFPX profile, um, it said that it was expecting 3.7 remaining. We have 3.6 remaining, so we're going to have to adjust the fuel burn just ever so slightly to just catch up with it. About 100 kilogram difference, which is not the end of the world. It's still good enough, eh? really good. I guess uh, you can't argue with that, because... You've got to take into account the, um, where did you get the fuel burn from expected? Um, the, yeah, the expected it, one. Uh, okay, continue, then I'll tell you the whole story. Well, what I was getting at is you've got your en route winds could be slightly exactly. different, and that could make a difference of 100 yeah. kilograms. Um, yes, that is true. So I, I want to be honest with you. For a hundred kilograms, I don't feel like changing my fuel burn. Okay, so how no. it happened? How it happened is this: in the beginning, Twixter gave me the specs on the seven three seven eight hundred, the Zebo actual specs of the aircraft that the Zebo is modelled on. I then took that and I set up my flights between Lisbon and Porto and I did about 10 return flights so about 20 flights and in that time I actually pushed it up lowered it pushed it up lowered it until I found a reasonable fuel flow bias so let's see if it's still open I'll show you guys uh, aircraft database uh, I'll put it on screen just now Right, so this is what it looks like behind the scenes um, in my template. If you look there, that cruise fuel bias, that is 5%. Right, that is the one that governs the, the, whole, the whole fuel flow calculation in PFPX. So if I change that value, it will change what PFPX gives me. So if I close this and I actually go to the OFP. This is what I was referring to. You see there, 3.7. That is what um, the estimated fuel is supposed to be at King Shaka. That's what's supposed to be remaining in the tanks. And if you look at the actual total, it's 3.6. And as you rightfully said, we have winds and all kinds of things that we need to take into consideration. So we are within 100 kilograms of actual. Now I can... And, and that's 100 kilograms. And you've used... What did you have to start with? Uh, I'll tell you now. Sorry, I've put other stuff on the screen. I'll tell you now. Want to open the page? I've got it in my hand. Yeah, it was six, six point zero fuel. So, uh, you've got two hundred pounds over 
2.4 tons of usage. Yes. So it's less than 1%, roughly. Yeah, which is cool. You see, now the 6 tons included 200 kilograms for taxi. All right. Um, taxi in and taxi out. That was 200 kilograms. So at takeoff, I didn't. I actually didn't check it at takeoff as I went onto the runway. It was estimated yeah. to be 5.8. What you'll have to do is to print out that. I have uh, it. Your I have it. plan sheet, sir. But also record the winds when you do it. Yeah. yeah. To so that you. Because, I mean, if the directions change from a crosswind mm. to a headwind, it's going to mm. make a difference, isn't it? It will, it will. Or a tailwind. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, at some point in time, I mean, I can probably add or subtract a zero point something, you know, in the bias over there. I'll do a couple... Do you want to save the changes? No. I'll do a couple of tests, but just as a matter of interest, I want to show you this one. At APDAC, that one, uh, count to 10, you'll see it just now. I actually wrote it down while I was flying. At that one, it was telling me it estimates I would have 4.7 but I actually had 4.8 so I wrote 4.8 in that line where the dots are so from that point on it's probably a wind change that has affected it because there I was still 100 kilograms ahead yeah yeah as I say it's not guaranteed mm. it's winds it could be you do need to fine tune your fuel burn, but sure. winds are going to play a big, significant effect on fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to actually do the what you said. You know, record the winds together with the actual estimates and actuals. Um, so I'll I'll refine it in the next couple of days, and then I'll put it out. Together. You'll have to get. John flying co-pilot with you and filling it all. Yeah, we'll make a plan. We'll make a plan. Okay, so I'm happy. I'm not going to worry too much about that. That's 100 kilograms. Um, yeah, not the end of the world. We shall refine it a little bit further, but yeah. Uh, okay. Well, gentlemen, and if there are any ladies, thank you for watching. I'm going to kill the stream right now, and we'll probably do one a little bit later on. I just need to have something to eat and drink, and I'll chat with the guys here on Discord. You're welcome to join us here as well if you want to chat with us. The link is below the video, and hopefully we do some more streams later on. Bye-bye. Bye, Nico. Thank you guys for watching as well. Sorry, I can't type to you right now. I'm... Locked out, I need to fix that as well. Bye-bye.